So I just gave a virtual keynote speech to an awesome uh, team and I wanted to share some thoughts around virtual events compared to in-person because most of our events are going to be virtual for a while. We need to get used to it. Um, they're not going anywhere. But as somebody who, it, it's just so critical for me to feel connected to others and to experience like the energy of other people, especially in the room. Like a lot of my speech, I prep, but oftentimes when I'm on stage, I, I don't know, it's like, it just comes through me based on like what I'm feeling in the room. And that's why I love it so much. And that's why I really feel like, like public speaking or speaking in public can be a divine experience because the message is within you and you have to trust yourself that it's there and that it'll show up for you. Make sure you can see people's faces. There's always going to be a couple of people who are just so like engaged and are there with you. Um, pretend like you're like making eye contact with them when they're laughing, even if it's on mute, like you're laughing with them and you can kind of read the room, you can read the space. Um, but don't get thrown off by the fact that life is still happening around them. And it's just, it, it is different. So I try to like focus on the couple of people and then just channel the energy of everybody else in the space because it's there, people are experiencing it. People are experiencing something different in their life at the moment. So it's gonna hit everybody differently. Um, and that goes for in-person or virtually, but it helps to like concentrate that way. I decided to stand for this talk because standing and, and maintaining a sense of posture uh, helps with your confidence and your like, it allows you to get the little fidgeting out of the way and the energy out. I talk with my hands a lot, I move a lot. In a chair, I think that it's harder for me to make sure I'm tapping into all, to like everything I wanna tap into and just like being so like wholly myself in that moment. Have good lighting, do like a good little background setup. My background was books and a bookcase with a ladder and a bunch of flowers, but you wanna know what really is happening behind it because I'm still building my bookshelf, that. So that was really what was happening. I used that step ladder that we're using to like paint and do stuff to put my laptop on and I made sure that there was proper lighting, which was just window lighting because I can't find my ring light right now. And I put a couple of bouquets of flowers because there's a missing patch of paint on my wall. Have water on hand, obviously, you're gonna need that. Be okay with like poking fun at what the situation is in the middle of your talk. Like I, I make a lot of jokes for myself more than anything. And I love to have like, just be like super real with everyone. Be like, that, that's like, this is what it is. And I'll like just make poke fun at myself, but like not in a really, not in a mean way. I just like, I'm silly. Obviously make sure your phone is on. Do not disturb. Make sure everything around you is quiet. Like tell everybody, whatever. I, I get so, make sure everything's charged. That's like the thing that I keeps me up, gives me nightmares now. What used to give me nightmares actually was missing my flights. I would dream, I, I love early morning flights. I know it's crazy, but I love like a 7 a.m. flight. I was gonna say six, but like that makes me have to wake up like in the middle of the night and I hate that. 7 a.m. flight, get there at 6 a.m., wake up at four or five, whatever. I love waking up at 4 a.m. Wow, I'm just sitting here reminiscing about what it was like to be on flights. But now it's like, is, some, is my computer gonna crash? Is my Wi-Fi gonna go? Where I live, because I live on a mountain now, last week our Wi-Fi went out for a full half day. It's like, what, what, what was I supposed to do if my speech was that day? So I, I kept thinking about that. Had backup plans. So that's how I got over it. Um, oh, here's something, and this is just, this is a tip, uh, a secret of something that I'm gonna start doing, but I realize, especially in corporate settings, Q and A's are interesting. I love them. I think they're awesome. I don't think everybody's comfortable asking questions. I, I mean, I'm always comfortable asking questions. It's literally what I get paid to do, but 
I, there's this thick thing about being put on the spot, especially in my speech, we get really, really vulnerable. So it's like really hard to kind of speak after that. You're, you're trying to process everything, which I understand. Instead of doing a Q and A, just asking people to share their thoughts. Because when people don't have, like nobody had a question, but everybody's thinking something. So I'm like, okay, cool. It would be really awesome if you shared your thoughts to me because I really wanna know where your head is at right now because I just shared all of my secrets. And I said, does anyone, like, can you share your thoughts? People shared their thoughts followed with a question because you want to like be encouraging of other people in their thought process and like whatever. It just makes it easier to share because you want it to be more collaborative. So collaboration is definitely also key for virtual uh, speaking, like be engaged, tell people to turn their cameras. I told people to turn their cameras on cameras on at the end, like towards the end after we did an activity because it was, it was critical for me to see everybody for this. Um, but find different ways to engage and break the sessions up. One thing I did was I played a recording. I brought in external audio. So like I brought in somebody else's voice I asked questions at the beginning. I started with a stretch and some deep belly breaths and intention setting because every, it's in the middle of people's work day or at the end of the work day. So you just want to come in and like show up that way. Looking at the camera instead of everybody else. That's really hard. I need, I know I need to work on that, but I think I did a lot better of a job than I typically do. So looking at the camera was important. Um, and just honestly, being okay with the situation, accepting that it's different, accepting that it is not in person. You can't hug everybody. That's like the most important thing to me is I love hugging everyone after and or before or during, like I'm a big hugger and I don't get to do that in these situations. And I, I, I really take in energy of hugs. So you just have to accept what's happening. You have to accept it and find ways to make it more enjoyable and, how, and, and, and find a moment to make people forget that they're sitting on another Zoom or Google Hangout because that is the fact. I mean, they are sitting on it, but you're also like having an experience with them and it can be really cool. I think it's gonna be awesome. I think the, the world of virtual events is going to be amazing. We, I, I, I want in-person events back so badly but there is a space for it it is accessible to people which i think is like the best part about it it's so many people are going to have access to events that they never would have been able to go to because they can't travel or it their schedules are com conflicting or whatever it is so yay for that and i think that that is how i am changing the way that i think about it so i appreciate you all i hope this was helpful it was just, I literally just got off of my talk and I just wanted to do a brain dump um, because I felt like you all would find it valuable. I've been thinking a lot about uh, speaking in public and how to help each other with it. So yeah, hope you have a great day.